Hey everybody, what's up? Chad Allen here, and welcome to Firechild Videos Back to the Basics, Episode 2. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, manipulating the objects in your scene, moving them, scaling them, rotating them, and, and the basic tools you're going to need, and the most important, probably the most important hotkeys in, in all of modeling in Blender. And... Um, you know, it's my goal by the end of this training series, you should be able to model a really cool looking, uh, this is the Blender logo that uh, I just modeled and extruded and, and textured and uh, did some compositing to give it this uh, depth of field. But this is our goal by the end of the series. So um, we're taking it slow. We're taking it step by step. We're helping you get over that learning curve. Let's begin. Let's just go ahead and start fresh here. So here we are. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of manipulating your objects, I want to take a step to episode one. Uh, there was a comment on my YouTube video, as you can see on your screen. Um, I'm bad with pronunciation, so Nesukor, Nes however you pronounce your name, I appreciate your comment. This is a very important comment. He says, if I'm using a laptop and a mouse without middle button, how can I use those shortcuts you mentioned in your tutorial? Now, if you remember episode one, uh, I said that in in order to rotate around your mesh to be able to see all sides of your object, you click the center mouse button and drag the mouse. And if you wanted to pan around your scene, you held down shift, click the center mouse button and moved around. Now Nasukor here uh, had a very good point. What if you don't have a middle mouse button? Well, that's very easily fixed. All you have to do is go to file and user preferences. If you remember, we went into this uh, a little bit in the first video. I, I was showing you the orbit styles between the trackball and the turntable. Hopefully you've experimented with those and you found which one works best for you. We can also use this panel. As you can see, there's tons of options to click right here to emulate three button mouse. Now, if we turn that on, what we can do now in order to rotate around our scene is hold down alt and left click and drag, and then we can rotate. If we want to pan around, alt shift, left click and drag. And that's that's the workaround if you don't have a middle mouse button. Alt, left click, Alt, shift, left click, and there you go. So uh, thank you, Nes uh, Nesukor. I'm sorry I'm butchering the, the pronunciation of your name, but it was a very important comment. I appreciate it. You know, guys, keep these kind of comments coming because it's little things like that that, you know, nobody's perfect. I, I probably should have mentioned that in part one. And, uh, you know, thanks to you guys, we can bring it around and share it with the community. So... Now on to the tutorial I was planning. Uh, what we're going to take a look at now in this beginners is manipulation of your objects. Because, um, you know, we've got them, our basic scene, we've got a mesh, we've got a light, and we've got a camera, but moving them around. How do we move them around our scene? Well, that's really, actually, there's two ways to do it. And, uh, well, there's three tools and two ways to open those tools. The first way is to use the clicking method. And if you go down and activate this tool right here, use a 3D manipulator widget. And we've got three widgets to use here. We've got a, if we hover over it, you can see the name of it. We've got a translate manipulator, also known as the grab tool. And uh, then we've got a rotate manipulator and we've got a scale manipulator. Now those are the three, Those you can do everything with these. And it's real simple to understand how each one is color coded. X is red here, this is Y and uh, this is Z. If you wanna move it on the X axis, just left click on the X and drag. The Y axis, same thing, click and drag, same thing for the Z. And if you want to free move, all you have to do is inside this white circle, click and drag, and then you can move it in any direction you want. Let me undo that. And the same goes for rotate. You know, click the axis you want to rotate it on, click to rotate, you know, click to rotate. Let's get back to basic. And the same for scale. You want to scale, activate the scale widget, scale on the X, scale on the Z, scale on the Y, in and out. Pretty basic. Um, but, however, when you start getting into more complicated meshes and you start working with more vertices and, and things of that nature, you're going to want to uh, get rid of this widget because it just gets in the way sometimes. So a lot of times I won't even use it. I'll just turn it off and I'll use the keyboard shortcuts. Now, before we get into that, let me go ahead and mention that uh, the grab or the translate, the rotate and the scale widgets, they work in object mode where we're affecting our entire object. But when we want to create our shapes and we want to do our actual modeling, all of that is done right here. If we click this, all of that is done right here in edit mode, because what that does is that gives us our individual vertices because uh, a mesh or an object is created of uh, well, if you're doing box modeling, it's created of vertices, edges, and faces. Now, if you do curve modeling, then you're using some curves, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, 
the same way that we edited that we uh, manipulated our object we can also use to manipulate our individual points so if we turn on this and we want to move our X you know you want to move this one real easy easy to do so see we can manipulate our mesh that way but let's say for example oops do that there we go but let's say that you got a whole lot of vertices you're messing with certain ones and this widgets getting just it's getting in the way uh, we can turn it off and we can use some shortcut keys now these shortcut keys I'm telling you guys are you must memorize these these are absolutely essential and uh, those keys are G S and R now the beauty of blender as I mentioned in the interface tutorial is they set up the hotkeys very very well G stands for grab so I've got one vertice selected here if I hit G I can grab it and then move it however I want. If I want to, well, let's actually go back to object mode and make that easier to understand. I can grab it, move it wherever I want. Hit S, I can scale it, hit R, and I can rotate it. Now, one thing to remember is when using your, your shortcut keys, say I hit S and I pull the mouse. To confirm my change that I just made, I need to left click, and that'll confirm it. If I scale it and then I decide, oh, you know what, I didn't want to scale that, I can right click and that'll cancel it and snap it back to its previous state. That works for grab, that works for rotate as well. So if you hit rotate and you rotate and you're like, whoa, 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 no, right click and you're out of it. So important to remember G for grab, R for rotate, S for scale. One additional thing to remember is when we hit G, S, or R by themselves, it's moving on all axis. It's like the free move. Um, to move on a solitary axis, say for example, I want to move this on the X axis and only the X axis. Easy to do, hit G and then hit X on your keyboard and that'll constrain it to the X axis. The same for Y, G, Y, and G, Z. And that goes for rotate and scale as well. You want to scale it on the X, hit S for scale, X for the X axis, and there you go. Same for Y and you get the picture. The same goes for rotating. Now, uh, and also to mention, it also works that way in edit mode. So G and X, and I move it only on the X axis. Very important. Uh, your homework assignment for tonight, guys, is to mess around with G, S, and R, and one more shortcut key I've got to show you right now, because this is absolutely the most important shortcut key that you're gonna use in any modeling you ever do in Blender. And that key is the E key, E for elephant, or more aptly, E for extrude. Because as I mentioned earlier, all your meshes are made up of vertices, edges, and faces. Now, we can select different uh, vertice, edge, or face by clicking these tools down here. That's vertex selection mode, edge selection, and face selection. Or we can use the shortcut hotkey of control tab. That'll bring up this menu, and we can select edge mode, control tab. We can select vertex, control tab. You get the point. So what we can do is let's say we want to bring this top part up and then scale the top part out, but give it that taper down. And uh, hopefully that makes sense. What we're gonna do is if we scale this face right now, watch what happens, just hit S to scale, and it, well, S to scale, left click to confirm it, and you'll see it's still affecting the rest of the mesh. Let's go ahead and hit E to extrude, bring it up, or we can cancel and hit G and move it wherever we want, or G, Z, constrain it to the Z axis, move it up and then hit S to scale, and you'll see now that original box down here isn't affected. That's because we extruded it out and created more geometry, and uh, that's absolutely essential to anything you're gonna build inside a blender. So G, S, R, and E, your homework for assignment for tonight, play with those four settings. Learn them, memorize them, and uh, just realize the potential because you can extrude faces, the E key, you can you know go to edge select or vertex select, select a couple vertices, hit extrude, bring them out. You know, there's just a multitude of things you can do. Edge select. To select multiple uh, edges, vertices, or faces, just hold down shift and right click on each individual that you want. You know, that works in vertex mode as well. Click, shift, shift, click, shift, click. And there you go. So play around with those settings and uh, tomorrow's tutorial will get started building something kind of like this. So the good stuff is coming guys. I hope you uh, learned something today. We'll see you tomorrow with a brand new Back to the Basics. Take it easy.